welcome to Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. As you matter story, we are not those people. We are strong, the winners, we are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? Hello, Humana Historians, and welcome to another exciting episode of Humana Story Live's Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 49. I am joined by the Raspberry Berets. If you'd like to join in on the conversation as well, simply log into our current Humana Story live thread and give us your best shot. If they're good, I'll read them on the air. And if they're bad, the Raspberry Berets will be more than happy to read them on the air. Coffee with Humana Story is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members, for members, and involves Humana Story members from around the world. Who knows who will be next? We also have the poor, poor unfortunate soul, the Red Corvette, joining us today. And if you can't find the show, you're probably using a cab somewhere in the Nevadas off-grid. But more importantly, the more you weigh, the harder you are to kidnap, so eat more breakfast. Really? Mm, breakfast. Fat kids <laughs> lag in real life. You know, I... I, I <laughs> okay, so, you know what, you guys are... Okay, that's it. Today, we're answering questions from our Twitter account. Uh, these questions will be answered throughout the show. And as always, our communities listen live thread and chat rooms will be answered as priority first. If you still love snail mail, you can mail us some goodies or you can give us some information regarding the current and past Coffee with Humanity Story episodes via P.O. Box 712-151, Santee, California. 92072. You can submit stories or missing people logs by going to our website, humanastory.com, and clicking the submit button. Submissions can also be mailed in using the same address above. A life in review episode will be aired May 17th or May 7th at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come join us via Twitter to learn more about it. Or go to our website, humanastory.com. If you feel like voicing your opinion, you can do so with a dedicated theme and open with your themed statement. Today's theme, rest in peace, Prince. Question of the day. Was there a conspiracy behind Prince's death? From what I understand, the police are investigating. And that's about all I know. We have a few comments from episode number 48 which was last week, and uh, I wanted to open this one up by giving a shout-out to Doug because <laughs> the one that I have coming here... Because Doug is awesome. Uh, yeah, there was one comment in here that had to do with the tuna. Somebody wanted to know more about the tuna population. And uh, I really want to find that one because... I'm still stuck on the tuna population. <laughs> do you have it on yours? Nope. Yeah, you do. You're just not looking. Gotta find it here. It's gonna take me a minute. A tuna population. Yeah, talk, mm. talk about tuna while I figure it out. Okay. Uh, do you like tuna? Yeah, I like tuna. Uh, I think that we're fishing the oceans out. 
that's what it is. We're fishing all the oceans out, and we're we're taking all the fish out of the ocean. And we're not replenishing <laughs> Doug, it. Doug, that's why we're running out of fish, Doug. Doug okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I don't. Okay. I can't find it. So who cares? All right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read it. So flat earther. Uh, he says, I do have a question. It's more like he wants your opinion. Uh, when he shoots his infrared thermometer into clear blue sky, he gets a negative 19 degree reading. When he points it into a cloud, he gets a 30 degree reading. And when he points it at the sun, he gets a whopping 480 degree reading. Uh, but it has to be pointed directly at the sun. When pointed directly at the moon, he gets a negative 18 degree reading. Um, I guess he went crazy with his therm- <laughs> his, his laser. <laughs> and uh, uh, he says the point he's trying to make here is that he was talking to someone in chat the other day. And he was they were telling him basically it's just random readings based on what he what he from what the gentleman read from the manufacturer. Uh, he also said that it only has about 100 yard footage or foot range, but every time he points it in one of these spots that he just mentioned, he always gets the same reading and temperature. Hmm. Uh, He said that these can't be random readings, that he doesn't believe it. It totally goes against everything that, I guess, his friend or the other person that he was talking to in chat was saying. And he wanted to know what your thoughts were on that, because he knows you have one. Well, I don't think they're random either, but how to interpret them, especially with a 100-foot range, you're at 100 feet, you're basically just looking at the air 100 feet out. So, you know, negative 19 versus 400 degrees, I mean, obviously, there's a huge difference there. I mean, a massive difference, but I don't know how to interpret it. I mean, when you when you point it at a light bulb that's six feet away, you get a, a, a decent reading. Uh, when you, but that, which is why everyone that I know that has really been doing the testing has been kind of trying to limit the the range to try to get something more a little, little more understandable, like pointing it in the shade of the moonlight or the moonlight itself, so an object on the ground, preferably an object that hasn't been out there all day. You know, take take two objects that are identical, put one in the moon chain, one in the moonlight, come back an hour later and and see what see what you get. So I don't I don't know what that what that means negative nineteen versus four hundred degrees I don't know because we all know that the the sun generates a, a huge amount of heat at least that's what mainstream science tells us uh, does the moon generate you know negative I mean could be in the negative range sure why not I just don't know enough so I haven't posted a video online best best way to do anything nowadays is just post a video and throw the question out there say hey how do you guys interpret these results. Put it, put it on tape, and put it out there, and see what happens. That's me. That's what I do. Okay, so Gud, Gud Tim's for all. Gud Tim's for all. He says it was a great show. That was a fun one. I wish you just had more time. I had a few ideas on why they might be spraying. Like Patricia said, they do one thing to accomplish many goals. It would put up a nice layer. To project things on for their project blue beam. Now I've heard this project blue beam hap- like everybody keeps mentioning it several times, and I'm curious if you know anything about that. I mean, yeah. I'll continue his statement here in a minute. But uh, well, let me go ahead and finish his statement. But I again, I want to touch on that project blue beam because I have no idea what anyone's talking about when it comes to that. Uh, he says also. Uh, I also think that they're manipulating weather to control the amounts of food that we produce. Lastly, I think they're medicating the masses to keep us docile, like fluoride does to the water supply. Mm-hmm. Um, but he doubts that they're trying to kill everyone, because I think I think that Christina had it right last time that I mean they'd be killing their own kids as well. But I, but again, I want to go back to that Project Blue Beam, and I want to understand what it is. Okay. Uh, Blue Beam, a uh, secret government project that may deal with high-level projections, very realistic. So could you, if you wanted to, create a three-dimensional UFO in the sky? And I'm not talking about your 
garden variety, you know, flashing light that, that goes across that you see at night. A couple of people snap some pictures. I'm talking something huge that you can see in the daylight. Are you talking like, uh, have you seen that new show V? Uh, like that, the, the very beginning. The, the, show, the remake out. or the 80s version? The remake one. It comes out um, over the yeah, TV yeah, it's big. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Can you Can you create something like that? And I have said multiple times over the last oh, X number of months that if Planet X decides to rear its ugly head nowadays, and you know, a lot of people are bringing it up lately, it's like, oh, Planet X, Planet X. Like, really? Because that was four years ago. What happened? If it shows up now, don't believe it for a second. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever, if there's going to be a giant celestial event or an alien invasion or anything weird happening in the sky, assume that it is manufactured. And in this case, assume that it's partially, at least, at least in part, manufactured by us. So that, uh, you know, we, yeah, that's that's the the whole concept of Blue Beam. Can you do a mass uh, illusion that fools a lot of people? A what lot if of people. They're uh, using our technology <laughs> to show these things, and I don't know. It's I kind of think that maybe they would be using our own technology to portray that to make us understand it better. But maybe I'm reading into that wrong. No, no, it's it's not a bad idea at all. Uh, it's it's something you would want to take credit for. Uh, one of those great sayings that I've loved so much over the years is power perceived is power achieved. A lot of people will say that, like, for example, they'll say UFOs. All the UFOs that you see in the sky, they're all reverse engineered from Area 51, and the Americans got the got the stranglehold on that. It's like, well, yeah, and, and if I was an American military guy, that's exactly what I'd want you to think. You know, Take credit for everything that you can. Uh, a perfect example of that would have been the pyramids, or the, or the, if more specifically, the Sphinx, the Sphinx, the, where you get it's not a big secret. The Sphinx was not always the Sphinx. The Sphinx appears to have been a lion at some point, but it doesn't make sense. So you're a pharaoh, you send your your recon teams out there, and it's like you know what? If I carve up this lion's head a certain way, I could put a pharaoh's head on there, and thus the Sphinx was born. And you can take credit for the whole thing. And the, the pyramids, for that matter, because people don't like question marks. And if there's no one else to take credit for it, why not? I mean, people steal each other's work all the time. It's called copyright infringement, usually. Yeah, that's true. Got a good point there. Yeah. So there are some comments from your page that we were going to go over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I Generally, I don't even look at those comments, but, but well, go ahead and yeah. throw some at me. Yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> yeah, you Thanks. think you Thanks. think I want everyone to know that I got your back when it comes to comments. Oh, it's so nice of you, man. <laughs> and and when you say you've got my back, that is only slightly gay. So that's that's cool. Slightly gay. Just oh. slightly. Slightly. You know what? You know what? I you guys Don't you know don't what? sing any boy George, seriously. I just can't take it at this point. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right. I'm not going to sing Boy George. I promise. No, no, not you. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can sing anything you want, Christina. So from Angel Garza. Okay. I can prove the flat earth is real with a small loan of a million dollars. I thought that was pretty funny. That's it? <laughs> That's it. That was the only comment that Oh, you <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah, do a fund me page. I can prove flat earth a million dollars. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, from Christopher Millington. Another awesome show, guys. Keep it up. From Adam Joseph Doty. Yep. Fun to listen to. Cool. Did you say yep like you know his, like who it is? I know know who Adam Joseph Doty is. I know a lot lot of the people that that are out there in the Flat Earth world because I look at it all the time. Knows all the cool people. I do. (laughs) All right, from Synthetic Dread. Nice show, guys. I think the chemtrails aren't intended to kill us, but perhaps dumb us down. Keep us docile. If it affects attention span, it could detour people from asking questions, effectively turning some of us into useful idiots. Wait, wait. You know what? No. You know what? I've got to interject here. It's not doing the job. Have you seen the feminists out there yet? Have you seen how the black community is all in an uptighty... I'm out of time. Now we're out of time. Life is a fickle word. An even more ironic moment in time. No one really understands how it began or where it will end. To some, life is to be spent living to its fullest. 
while some others prefer the solitude of a mountaintop in seclusion. The one thing we are aware of is that life is a very fragile moment in the slipstream of time that can only be described as eternity. Your life should be spent doing what it is that you feel you should do with yours, as it is a short remembrance in the grand scheme of those who are close to you. How you live now will be how people remember who you were. So live well. Come join us May 7th at 8 p.m. We will be talking to the Fobles about a relative they have by the name of Jeff Joseph, who went missing June 21st, 2014, and has not been heard from since. We will learn how it is to cope with the loss of a loved one and what you can do if you are ever stuck in the same situation. You can join in on the live discussion at humanastory.com. That's H-U-M-A-N-A-S-T-O-R-Y dot com. Simply click Listen Live, May 7th at 8 p.m. You will also be able to tweet your questions live to the Fobles using Twitter at Humanistory, H-U-M-A-N-A-S-T-O-R-Y. For further information on this event, come to Humanistory.com. Alright, so you're on segment two of episode number 49. Rest in peace, Prince. Rest in peace. I uh, totally forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was talking about being docile. I think it was uh, Synthetic Dread was talking about being docile. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I think he needs to turn on the news because everybody's going batshit crazy. Um... What other comments do we have over there from the peanut gallery? Uh, okay, this uh, is from uh, Simon. Uh, let me see if I can pronounce his last name here. It's uh, Hadelero. Okay, well, that's the best I can do. Sorry. Okay, thanks for answering my question. And I was not sar- sar- sarcastic when I asked it. We love you, Mark. And then, then we have uh, Jeff Frazier. Uh, the only thing missing from the round table was a press a doodle. Uh, it's laughing character. A pseudo. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I can't. I was horrible at uh, reading. Okay. <laughs> character shout out wrong at regular intervals. <laughs> Seriously, it's a good show. I'm having Brian a real shout out for trying the Kim Trill topic to the flat earth. Okay. <laughs> well, this has got to okay. be funny. Oh, please, please, please do one more. Please. One more. One more. One more. Oh, one more. Okay. Uh, oh, God. Okay, here we go. Mr. Jack Frost. That that sucks. Like wait, a- wait, hold on, hold on. Jack. I love you, man. Okay, go ahead. Jack okay, Frost. Okay, Jack says, Frost. The it's... only thing missing from this round table. No, wait that was. Minute, that's oh, no. the one. Okay, wait a minute. I got the wrong one. Okay, excuse me. Oh, I'm still here. Okay, great show. Thanks, Brian, Mark, Partition, others. There are. S- oh, are by the way, the, wait, much hold, hold, as hold, David. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Doug, if you're listening, uh, the others was you. <laughs> okay, go. Go ahead. Okay, um, there are many others such as David Loke and Alex Jones who say the geoengineering best. Oh God, not another one. Speciality chemical chemtrails are specifically chemtrails. Oh, specifically chemtrails are soft kill weapon, much alkin to the water fluoridation. Uh, God, here we go. <laughs> the, the titles. My my eyes are going blurry. The e- <laughs> or have fun. It's, uh, it's the elites. The elites either have technology. Okay, medicine. medicine to combat these effects or powerless as they follow falling orders from a higher up on the NWO pyramid and have no choice but to order spraying 
to continue the spraying should all stop as it's not proven to be effective in controlling global warning and it's the de- <laughs> terminal effects on humans and the earth are not fully understood oh my god so, i think i did there you go <laughs> okay so, so so mark i just want to point something out to you uh you either read your comments or uh i make mark read them <laughs> yeah i'll read them every time wow <laughs> That's a tough choice. That's, that's like choosing between. I guarantee to make you laugh. That, that's like choosing between uh, um, drug addiction or mental illness. <laughs> right, what, what do you pick? All right. So Francis Francis says the show needs an hour. Are you sure you want an hour of this? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of scary. I'm like crying over here. No, I I love it. Thank you, Mark, for reading that. That's great. All right, so go. I know I have a hard time pronouncing words. So go. Go. I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely send you the best of Brack and Space Coast after this. Oh yeah, you gotta send me that. I got it. <laughs> you'll you'll get it immediately, or maybe okay. you won't get oh, it. But yeah. <laughs> somebody's gonna awesome. get it. All right, so you're on Daryl Patter's pattern pattern. Yeah, we have some from Patricia Steers page. So from Daryl Patton about the chemtrail thing. I live in Portland, Oregon, and it was like 80 degrees, but it felt like 100. And it was humid, and there were chemtrail clouds blocking the sun. But I think it, I was thinking it could be the false clouds holding heat in and making it too dry. And also, Oregon is Oregon is known for its rain. And the past years, it has rained less and less now in summer. It starts like two months early weather-wise. But yeah, I think that it's holding in the heat. That's interesting. What do you got to say about that? Oh, it's interesting. Tell me, or I'll make Mark read the next one. No, 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 because we're running out of time anyway. <laughs> All right, okay. from uh, Rory McFizz. What a happy, bright show. Really enjoyed it. Thank you all. Peace and good topics. And Catherine Larson, fun show. There are so many great questions. From Isa Isa. What airports are these planes spraying these chemicals from? Are they all from U.S. military bases or each country doing their own spraying on their own citizens each country is doing their own you think They're so? All, it's it's all over the world it's not just here all right and seeing chemtrails in southern spain malaga past two days have any of the u.s politicians that are pushing global warming ever been asked if it's due to chem- chemtrails probably but they aren't dumb enough to answer in a positive light uh, it's it's con- it's considered conspiracy taboo for anybody in the mainstream to talk about it. So they why don't. why is that? Because uh, they don't tra- They don't want to leave the door open. They don't want to give people a, a foothold into the conspiracy world. You start talking about chemtrails, that leads to other things, which leads to nine eleven, which leads to JFK, and leads to you know all the other fun stuff. So they just try to anything anything you remotely conspiracy based is considered off limits. And talking about the lunar wave, a scripture in Psalms shows King David comments about the water above the firmament. Could this water in the firmament have something to do with the waves, temperature, and the color of the moon? Hmm. Interesting. Hadn't, That's hadn't, actually a good question. Uh, hadn't, hadn't I hadn't really heard that. That's really good. Thanks. Thanks for whoever came up with that. Again, uh, it, every day you learn something new. That'd be Isa Isa. And Isa Isa, good questions, man. Or... Moment. No, normally, I'd say you know I get smarter every day, but I'm pretty sure that's trademarked by a YouTube guy, so <laughs> I can't say that now. <laughs> yeah, right. So I try to get smarter every day. See what I did there? Just <laughs> yep. kind of do a little... All right. So yeah. from in veritate batai, I think that's what it says. <laughs> Could they be spraying to cause a spiritual manipulation, blocking us or our prayers to Jesus, or blocking God from us? Could the metals in chemtrails block spiritual frequencies? Great show, guys. John fourteen six. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Isn't that what's on uh, somebody's tombstone? Uh, no, that's Psalms nineteen one, uh, and the firmament shows his handiwork. That's uh, hmm. Werner von Braun's headstone. All right, and from multi Tom Tom. I'm really interested in what Doug said about the tuna population. Hey, we found the question. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and I can confirm. Uh, found the that, question. <laughs> and I can confirm that the tuna population in the Indian Ocean has been in heavy decline for a few number of years now. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. So, Doug, if you're there, we're going to snag you, and uh, we're going to uh, make you answer the question next time. We need to know. 
He's gonna kill me about the tuna population. I've been making fun of him. But you know what? He makes fun of me. He says I'm Ray Romano. So yeah. you're not wait, wait, you're not Ray Romano? <laughs> I mean, yes, I am. My I'm... agent told me that no. <laughs> this is the show I'd be doing, and Ray <laughs> Romano would be doing it. Right? I can't believe this. Hey, you were great in Ice Age, by the way. And Ice Age too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So oh, uh, yeah. let's talk about Prince here, huh? Okay, so I know that he's been talking about chemtrails um heavily. Uh he did a couple interviews and one of the big interviews was the the incident uh he was talking about chemtrails heavily. Huh. Yeah, I don't remember the name of the, the talk show. I just know it. If anybody knows it, type it in the comments if you get a chance. Yeah, I'm not sure which one it was, but yeah, he was talking to somebody about chemtrails and about conspiracies. And, and the police and... are investigating him, because are investigating his murder because they think it might be more. Well, hopefully. Well, hopefully we'll find out. I mean, I don't know. I, Prince has never been on my conspiracy radar, but you never you What never kind know. of conspiracy radar do you have? Well, a pretty good one, actually. I uh, mean, I know... You don't if, know anything if, about the Raspberry Beret. I, I, seriously, I... I try to find out what people are out there are sticking their necks out. And I thought I knew most of them. Uh, I don't think Prince was really up there yet. I mean, he's dodged most of the um, controversial subjects over the years. So, ah, who knows? So what do you think about this lunar wave? I want to know about the lunar wave. And I was going to ask you last time, but we ran completely out of time. Uh, Lunar Wave by Crow Triple Seven. You know, I, I was a big believer in it because he's got the best moon footage. You know, he, he takes some really great shots of the moon. And initially, it looked like some sort of resolution issue because, like, it looked like a like a vertical hold issue that was going through the moon. On in that in that case, it seemed sort of software based. But Crow came out recently and said, "You know what? I'm starting to lean heavily that maybe what's up there, maybe the firmament is made out of some sort of liquid." Not necessarily H2O as we know it, but maybe some sort of suspended liquid medium that these things are in. And maybe the moon is in there somewhere. Uh, you know, it may not be three-dimensional, but it's it's in there. And maybe that wave that's going across the moon is a ripple. You know, a big, not which is funny because he was in front of him the entire time. He kept calling it a lunar wave and a lunar wave, right? But again, that's the last thing you'd think of. It's like, well, it's not like it's in water or anything. What if it was? Uh, and then another guy, Brian Mullen, who was a structural engineer, he he kind of put his two cents in, uh, which is actually worth more than two cents in my opinion. And he started saying, yeah, he goes, because I'm starting to think that there's actually some sort of whatever's blocking this thing up there appears to be solid and appears to have liquid features to it. Like jello. Well, yeah, yeah. I, could, they, I, they, they were all talking about that, but I, I was talking to Doug about um, what if it, okay, you know, uh, the Aurora Borealis. Yes. Okay, so when the sun when the sun uh, hits earth with all its rays, you get that sparkle. Well, I'd imagine that sparkle doesn't disappear just because it looks like it goes away in the human eye. And yeah. if they're using a telescope, wouldn't wouldn't that pick it up? Maybe. But I mean, that looks a lot like if you will look at it on TV, if you look at it on anything you can do like YouTube or TV, you'll see that the ro- it looks like that water liquid. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like waving against the sky. Uh, yeah, I'd said it since, uh, I don't know, month one, because they said, well, you know, what do you think the firmament's made out of? And I said, oh, it could be several things. It could be frequency-based. It could be a heavy element. It could be a heavy water. You know, it, But it, I don't think it's H2O like we think it is. I think it's something else. I think it's uh, it's much more complex than just water and probably a lot more dense. I don't think it's just suspended water. I, I think that it's a mixture. You know, who knows? Maybe it's a force field that's holding in water. You know, maybe there's a permeable barrier. I'm not sure, but it's uh, Rob Skiba touched on. He goes, wouldn't that be the ultimate fail-safe system? And that if you're going to build a terrarium, you want to make sure that terrarium, whatever is in it, never, ever, ever gets out. Then you, you make it hermetically sealed and then put it inside, you know, underwater. So that if they found a way out, they'd, cu- they'd crush the, the whole system. Okay. They'd, uh, so themselves. then I've got a small little question. Somehow I doubt why, that. <laughs> why, small. why hide it? Like, why why put it behind barrier after barrier? Why not just open it up and from the beginning? I mean, why the conspiracy side of it? Why not just... You mean why hide the shape of the earth? Yeah, I mean, that's... Why? It, because it's it's power, it's control. It's something that you know that the general public doesn't know. And as long as you have that... Uh, you can use it for to exploit uh, several things. 
Uh, but more than that, by the time they figured out what it was, again, take your take your pick on what it would turn over. I mean, if you want to go down academia, you want to talk about financial systems. Well, no, what I, what I mean is, okay, just from the very beginning, why not just be open about it from the beginning? I mean, I don't, oh, you I mean as still, far as the creators are concerned, yeah, they the, the, would still the things have that the power. things that built this place. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, because it's 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 the whole question of choice. It, it, no different than a wildlife preserve. The way we're designed. Once we figure out what where God is, you know, and, and realize that God's real, then we don't act like we would naturally. We don't do it. All we care about is what God thinks. No one would ever do anything bad. Uh, the old saying is, why do you let bad things, you know, happen to good people? That, that's the same thing that, that applies here. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say, because I don't, I don't know if it's okay. So you want to test a free we, a, well, no. you want to test a free will to a population. This is how you do it. Yeah, but you what don't if- let them know where they are. You don't let them know that there actually is concrete, 100% proof that there is a higher power. Not more done. Like, Not a time. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Humana Story thanks you for listening and your activity within our community. We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life-changing events. 